Welcome back to SC4 Crochet on YouTube. Today's tutorial is going to be on the versatile triangle wrap. There's so many different ways you could wear this. It's perfect for fall and it's a super easy project too. So it makes a nice gift for the holidays. For this tutorial, I'm using Charisma yarn by Loops and Threads. This is a bulky weight five yarn in 100% acrylic. The color here is off-white. Um, and I am also using an L hook, which is an eight millimeter. I have my slip stitch on my hook and row one is four foundation half double crochets. So chain two, yarn over, insert into the first, yarn over and pull through, yarn over, pull through one, and that gives us the chain, and then yarn over and pull through all three for the half double. So I'm gonna do that three more times for a total of four. So for row two, we're going to chain up two and turn our work. I don't count my chain two as a stitch. So we're going right into this first half double here. What we do for row two is we're going to place an increase in the first stitch and an increase in the last stitch. And you just increase by putting two half double crochets in one stitch. So for the first stitch is going to be one and two in the same stitch. We'll go over for three and four. And then in our last stitch, we're gonna place another two. So that's gonna be five and six. So we increase by two stitches in row two for a total of six. And we're gonna repeat row two for five more rows. So you're just going to put an increase in the first and the last stitch for five more rows. That means that your count should be in row three, it should be eight, then 10, 12, 14, and finally 16 in row seven. So I will meet you back at the end of row seven. All right, so here we are at the end of row seven with our 16 stitches. So now we're gonna go into row eight. What we're doing differently for row eight is that we are going to increase in the first two stitches in the last two stitches. So let's see how that looks. We're going to chain two and turn. And this row eight should end up being 20 stitches. So in our first stitch, we're going to go for two half double crochets. So that's one and two. And then we're gonna place another two in the second stitch. So that's three and four. And now we're gonna crochet across five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And we're at our last two stitches. So we're gonna put two here. This is 17 and 18, and another two in our last stitch, which is 19 and 20. Okay, so we increase by four in row eight. Now row nine, 
all the way through row 15, we're just repeating row two. So that means we're just doing our increase in the first and the last stitch again. So of course I'm chaining up two, turning my work. This is going to be one and two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 17, 18, 19, 20. And then in our last stitch, we're doing 21 and 22. So you're going to repeat that. That's our row two with just the increase in the first and the last stitch. And you're going to do that all the way up through row 15, which means you're going to have the count of 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, and 34 for row 15. So I'll meet you back at the end of row 15. All right, so we're done with row 15. Row 16 is going to be a repeat of row 8. So I'm chaining up two. And remember that row 8 is the two increases. Uh, or increase in the first two stitch and increase in the last two stitch. So row 16 should actually be 38 half double crochets. So we're going to start off with one and two in the same stitch, three and four in the same stitch. Okay. And then we're going to half double crochet across until we reach the last two stitches and I'll meet you back there. All right, so this is still the end of row 16. Um, this is my 34th stitch. And now my last two stitches, I'm gonna do 35 and 36, and then 37 and 38. So that's row 16 with 38 stitches. I'm gonna chain two and turn. And now for row 17 through 23, we're just doing our repeat of row two which means we are only increasing in the first and the last stitch. Um, since you're going up from 17 to 23, your row count, your stitch count should be 40, 42, 44, 46, 48, 50, and then finally 52 in row 23. So I'll meet you back at the end of row 23. All right, so here we are at the end of row 23 and we have our 58 stitches in this row okay okay so you can tell from the pattern that we're pretty much doing the same thing all of the rows are either a repeat of row two or a repeat of row eight um so the next row row 24 is going to be another repeat of row eight so we're going to have 56 stitches in it and then we're going to go from rows 25 to 31 repeating row two so since it just alternates this way what i'm going to do is i'm going to leave a chart in here with the stitch count or with we're going to continue to increase the size of our triangle until we get to row 48. So the triangle body is 48 rows total and I will leave the pattern information in a slide next so that you can follow along and then I will meet you back at the end of row 48. All right, this is row 25 for me and I'm attaching another ball of yarn. I just wanted to kind of show you guys how I go about attaching it. You do want to leave um, a decent tail to weave, weave over so you can make sure you can trim off any ends. Um, you don't want anything, since it's just a solid triangle, you don't want to have like any yarn ends poking out of it. So um, just leave yourself a good enough tail. Um, so what I do with half doubles in order to attach, and I'm not even going to do it on that one. Um, what I do is I start my half double crochet. So I yarn over and I insert. And this is my ending tail. So I just leave that, actually bring it forward. And then with my new tail, I just leave a 
decent amount of tail there and I lay it across this way and then I pull it from the back so this would be my yarn over and pull through so that I have my three loops on the hook to finish my half double crochet just pull through okay after I do that one then I take my two tails and I go ahead and tie a knot in those not too tight because that will distort your stitches a little and pull them um, so just enough to tie that knot okay and then from there I would go ahead and continue my half double crochets but I pull those uh, yarn tails so that I can yarn over top of them so that will hide them in my work um, you still want to make sure that you weave the tails in so if they start to poke out you might want to break out your yarn needle and weave them back in the opposite direction but this should still be um, enough for you to weave in and then just trim off the end when you get to it Okay, so we just finished row 48. This is a the end of my 110 stitches, okay, uh, with my two increases in the last two stitches. Okay, so now we're going to start edging. So this is the top of the triangle. We're going to take the edging all along the sides here, all the way down to the tip of the triangle, and then we're going to bring it back around up the other side of the triangle. So let me show you how we do that. So I ended with that half double crochet. Instead of chaining two, I'm just going to chain one. And then I'm going to rotate my work sideways so that I'm looking at the side of my triangle. All right, so now I'm looking at the side of my half doubles. What I like to do is I like to work about three singles for every two half doubles. So that's how I keep my count together. Um, so I kind of look for these spaces and then I use those as my guide. So I am going to go here first. This is basically right on the side grabbing my first half double on that row or my last half double on that row I should say. And I'm just going to single crochet there. Okay, then in the space, which would be the top of the next row of half doubles, I'm gonna insert in there, that's stitch two, and then I'm gonna grab that side again for a stitch three. And that's how I count out my stitches. So this is a row and this is a row and I have three singles per row. So I try to do the same thing going down, keeping in mind these are two rows. I wanna grab three stitches, so I kind of eyeball it. Sometimes you can go in here, sometimes you can go in here. It's really up to you, but um, it's not gonna make much of a difference as long as you kind of keep your count steady. So I'm gonna keep stitching and I'll let you watch as I go um, just to see how, where I end up placing my stitches.
All right, so this ends up being my 72nd stitch, 72 stitches total or 72 singles um, total along the side. Okay, and I just did the math real quick. So we had 48 rows and we did like three per two. So that's 1.5. So sorry, 48 times 1.5 is gonna give you 72. Um, so that's just a little bit of math there, but not that big of a deal if your count is a little bit off. I'm just telling you where I ended up if you, you know, evenly stitched your single crochets across your border. It doesn't really matter. Um, ultimately, the row of single crochets is just for cleaning up the edge um, so that it's more consistent instead of the, you know, up and down edges you have with the half double crochets. Now, something important here at this end. So this was 72 right here in the corner. And this is at the corner of the first row where we did that foundation half double crochet. What I'm going to do in order to turn here is I'm going to put two half double crochets in this, in this spot. So I already did one that was my 72nd stitch. So I'm going to do one more here and that's going to turn me around. And now I'm going to do, I'm going to take my tail that I started with and go ahead and stitch over top of that. And I'm going to insert one single crochet into each of these starting stitches. And remember we started off with four half double crochets. So that should have been one, two, three, four. Um, why do I have an extra one on the end? I don't know, but either way, I'm going to put two in that one. I'm gonna pull that edge if I can find it. That's it right there. This yarn is a little fuzzy, so it's make it harder for me to find that stitch, but that's my last stitch right there. And so I'm gonna put two in that last stitch. Okay, so that's gonna turn me around to come back up the side, and I'm gonna use the same method to make my single crochets along this edge as well. So now that I've turned, remember that is stitch one um, that I just put in the corner. So I'm gonna follow the same method to bring my stitches or my edging around this side as well. I'm gonna meet you at this corner, okay? So don't come along the top, just stop here at the corner and I'll, be, I'll meet you right back here. All right, I was worried there for a second, but this is 71. So instead of taking 72 in the corner, I'm just gonna grab the top bar of this um, half double crochet and go ahead and make that my 72nd single crochet. Okay, so I am right there at the corner. All right, so that's the end of your edging along the bottom of the triangle. So along the top, now we're going to create the straps and the final edging along the top at the same time. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is right here at this corner, I'm going to chain 101 chains. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I will meet you at the end of my 101 chains. This okay, so I just finished 101 chains, and you can see that I made my chains kind of loose. Okay, so they're not super tight. All right, what I'm gonna do after 101 chains, I'm gonna turn my chain over and I'm going to crochet into these back bumps. Okay, so we're going into the bump and I'm going to slip stitch into these bumps. Okay, so we're just yarning over and pulling through. Okay, so I'm gonna go all the way back down my chain and it should be 100 slip stitches when you make it to the end. And if you did your chain loose, it should be super easy to just kind of grab those loops and it just slip stitch through them. So we want this strap to be fluffy, kind of the way our, our thickness of our yarn is. So we don't necessarily need to stitch this tight. So we are just making easy slip stitches all the way down. So I'm going to meet you at the end of our chain 
before we do the edging on the top. All right, so just slip stitch down your chain and I will meet you back. My first few chains were definitely tighter than the ones that I did at the end, but it's all good. So I'm just working those last few stitches here. And here is my last official bump. Okay, and that's my last slip stitch. All right, so now we have our first strap completed. You can see it's nice and thick. Um, so it matches the thickness of the wrap all together. All right, so that's the first strap. We just did the last slip stitch here. So what I'm gonna do is pick right back up in my first half double crochet of that row, and I'm going to single crochet along the top. So you see how that lines right up with the strap. We're going to make single crochets all along this top row to complete the final edging of the triangle. And I will meet you at the end of this edge. All right, so I'm almost at the end of my single crochets at the top of my, the top edge of my triangle. And that's where my yarn is ending. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach another skein of yarn. It's unfortunate too, if you think about how much we have left to do on the project that we're about to crack a whole nother skein of yarn open for this. So um, I guess if you wanted to modify the pattern just to make sure that you didn't have to use another ball of yarn, you could certainly take that last row out. Um, but that's just where I felt comfortable with it, um, especially with the versatility of the wrap. You do wanna make sure that it's wide enough and long enough so that you can do all of the um, various stylings with it. Um, so for me, it's not worth it to, you know, waste that last row. Um, but I mean, it's completely up to you. And then of course, tensions vary as you work on projects. So you may find that your tension may have been a little bit tighter. So you may not have ended up in the same spot, but this will be the fifth skein of yarn um, that I've used for this project. So um, I made it all the way, almost all the way through with just four skeins. So I'm going to go ahead and attach this skein um, in a single crochet. And if you're similar to how I did with the half double, um, I attach by going in first. So since we don't yarn over for the singles, I just go ahead and um, lay my tails over it like that. And then grab the new tail from the back and complete my single. And then I go ahead and tie these together in order to lock them in. and not too tight so it doesn't move my stitch. And then I'm going to continue to single crochet along the top of it so that I can hide that tail. Um, yeah, so I'll go ahead and let you watch the rest of this since I'm almost at the end. Well, we're, we're going to start the next strap. Oops, I didn't even realize I had moved my light. Sorry about that. There we go. All right, so that was the last half double. Sorry, so I look back at my pattern Took another look at the pattern and we actually do want to single crochet in there. So this was my last half double crochet that I single crocheted into. And I'm going to pick up this stitch here, which was our first um, single crochet along the edge. And I'm going to single crochet into that. Okay, so that's gonna finish off our edge. All right, so patterns are great. They keep us on track. <laughs> now that I did that, I'm gonna go ahead and chain 100 and I will meet you at the end of my 100 chains. Remember to keep it loose like you did on the other strap so that we can uh, single crochet, so that we can slip stitch into that back bump. So I'll meet you at the end of the 100 chains. 
All right, so that's my 100 chains. And now I'm going to flip and go into that back bump again and start my slip stitches. So we're going to continue to slip stitch all the way down just like we did before. And I will meet you at the end of this chain when we're done with our slip stitches so that we can finish it off. All right, so we're at our last couple of stitches here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do those. And that is the final bump right here. Okay, and then with completing that one, what I'm going to do is I am going to slip stitch in this section right where we started and that is how I'm finishing off. Okay, so slip stitch and then chain one and then I'll cut my yarn. and pull that tight and that is it this is the only piece that you'll have to weave in because we caught all our tails as we were working all right so I do have a yarn needle um, even though the yarn is chunky it still goes into my regular needle just fine just gotta wiggle it in there just fine all right there it goes and then I'm just going to take this in the side of this stitch here. Okay, make sure that evens out on the edge so we hide it. And then I'm gonna come down a few stitches and over. All right, and that's all weave through. So that is the final piece of our project. So here's a look at our finished project, just in one of the many ways that you could wear it. I got it styled on the mannequin this time instead of on me since I did so much posing the other day. Um, the If you're interested in the color that I used in my thumbnail pictures, that is the color taupe. Again, this one was in off-white and there's so many different color options to choose from. I would love to see your version if you decide to make this. Make sure you tag me in your post on Instagram. I'm SC4 Crochet. I would love to see it. If you made it this far through the video, I hope you've already clicked the like button. Also, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and notification bell. I will be back with new videos. And I thank you guys so much for your support. And thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.